Hello everyone, my name is Raghav. Uh, I am a fellow at SFLC.in and perhaps the only person here wearing a suit. But anyway, um, so I'll be beginning with the talk. Meanwhile, people will settle in. So firstly, why do we need a study like this is the question. Patents are a way of eliminating competition and it gives you the exclusive right over an invention. So I'm not here to debate whether that is correct, morally wrong or right. I'm only here to discuss the implications of that. But then again, what is an invention is the question. Is it the product of something that is owned by a community or should be rather owned by a community? Or is it the fruit of individual labor is the question. So that is the premise of this talk. Now, where does the problem start? Uh, firstly, I'll just like, like to ask everyone who, how many of you are aware about software patents in general? How many of you have heard the term software patents? Okay, so quite a few hands. That's great. So, like many markets, we have a patent market. And even if a startup goes ahead and invents something and gets, tries to get it patented, it is met with loads of litigation from the side of big tech companies like Fang. And then there are the added burden of patent trolls. A patent troll is basically an entity that, put in simple words, uh, tries to get a patent beforehand solely for earning revenue out of it and then threaten the other, uh, other party th uh, through the way of lit uh, litigation and other such cumbersome processes. So what a patent troll will generally do is they'll get a, like a very vague and a very generic sort of patent which will be applicable to a lot of patents in gen uh, like a lot, lot of applications in general and then they'll try to make money out of it by threatening the other applicant. Thus, the big fish eats the small fish in these circumstances. But I'd like to ask you that what is a patent in general and specifically in terms of software. A software patent is what makes Google, Google. It is a statutory right that is given to an inventor in return of full disclosure of such invention. Generally, the, cre the creative part of a software is handled by the copyright law and the functional part of the, uh, pat uh, the software is dealt by with patent law. So um, the source code would, could perhaps get copyright protection. And generally speaking, uh, um, the algorithm and the computer program itself may be able to get a patent. However, that's to clarify that algorithms are not patentable in, in India as per the law. And neither is computer program per se. But little did we know that this li little word, this phrase called per se would act as the Trojan horse of the city of us. Because it is this little phrase that enables big companies like Facebook, Amazon, uh, Facebook is now meta, but then Google, and then there's companies like Qualcomm, Microsoft, our beloved Tencent. And then you also have, a, you also have some Indian uh, companies like TCS, for example. And what these companies do is they perhaps try to get a software patented because the law says, the, the justification that they give is that a computer program per se cannot be patentable. But tell me something, can a computer program exist per se? Per se basically means by itself or as such. 
a computer program cannot exist independent of the hardware. That is common knowledge. Because it's, it's just the way it is. And, but the justi justification we get so far is that since the law says that it is computer program per se, we cannot challenge that. So what acts as a death knell for FOSS? Like I mentioned before, there's a section uh, in the Patents Act called the Section 3, which lays down what are not inventions. So one of the subsections of that, in, uh, of that section is computer programs, purser algorithms, uh, as I've already mentioned. But the problem here is that out, out of 10 every such software patents, eight or nine at least are given to foreign companies. Okay, now the problem over here is that for two decades, which is a uh, statutory period of a protection of a patent, these entities can go ahead and milk the software and false alternatives can only come afterwards, right? Because it's already become proprietary software. Firstly, a software cannot even be patented in India, but it's happening. Hence this talk in which I'll be further elaborating upon how uh, entities from India and abroad are getting software patents in India, where it's not even legal yet. So a soft corn of a software. What is happening is in, in our courts that we have been relying heavily on the European Union uh, jurisprudence and the law of the European Union when it comes to software and uh, computer programs and the law behind that basically. So for example, there, there was this case called Ericsson versus Intex from 2015. Pardon me. Uh, this case was decided before the Delhi High Court and it was decided that any computer program having a technical effect can be patented. And a 1986 case was cited to that effect from the European Union, uh, the European Patent Office. Now the problem over here is that think about it. Doesn't every software have a technical effect? Firstly, what do we even mean by technical effect? A technical effect as defined by the, some of the cases that we've researched as an organization so far is that you have some physical or electrical effect on the hardware. Now, by that definition, doesn't every software have a technical effect? So you, basically you are giving unlimited amount of freedom to the big tech companies, be it Indian companies, be it Geo, be it TCS, any, any company can be an example. They're going ahead and filing these patent applications and it's really hurting FOSS. Now, in this particular case that I have referred to, what they effectively did was they, in order to get rid of the objection that had, that had been raised by the Indian Patent Office, uh, they cited that we, in fact, have a general purpose computer attached to our uh, software. Now, a general purpose computer will obviously be attached to a software, right? Because it's in fact not serving any specific purpose. It's just there. So there's no invention there. It's not novel in any way, which is one of the, um, I would say, ingredients of a patent that you need to have a, an invention that is novel in nature, right? So this is what's happening uh, basically so far. You have objections pouring in and they just lap it saying per se, no. This is the uh, empirical data that we've gathered so far. So, um, Basically, from the 
financial year 2014-15 to financial year 21-22, what we've observed so far is that uh, there, there's been an increased amount of uh, number of, in the number of software patents that are being granted. As you can see, the number was earlier in the range of 200 to 300. Now it's risen up to even 1000, it touched 1000 in 2019. And we have analyzed this and we have come to the conclusion that this is a result of the computer related inventions guidelines that, that were brought out by the patent office, Indian patent office. Now, uh, the funny thing is that these guidelines were actually implemented to keep uh, software patents in check. But they have actually acted as an enabler of granting software patents to big companies. And there's a monopoly of uh, the multinationals in these software patents. So the blue part of the graph represents the foreign companies and the tiny pink part is represented by uh, the Indian companies. So it is d clearly dominated by foreign companies. So I'll just quickly explain as to what are the CRI guidelines. These guidelines uh, basically deal with computer related inventions, which is another name for uh, algorithms, softwares, computer programs, etc. There's been a 40% increase in software patents for the time that the 2015 guidelines existed. And uh, they specifically mentioned that there should be a further technical effect. But irrespective of that, there has been an increase, 40% increase in the number of software patents. And I personally attribute it to the 2015 judgment that was brought out, uh, that I earlier mentioned, Ericsson versus Intex. Though, as you, had meant, as, as you can probably uh, see in the graph, in 2016, uh, the financial year 2016-17, the slope has sort of, it, it's not as steep as it is in 2015 or 17. But that's because the 2016 guidelines were actually quite progressive in nature and they mandated that there must be a novel hardware for, for applicants to obtain a uh, patent in the field of software as well as hardware. So, the 2015 guidelines, even though they were technically the best, did not result in any form of improvement when it comes to the numbers and granting of software patents. The 2017 guidelines, post the 2017 guidelines, there was a 54% increase in monthly, uh, a monthly increase in the number of software patents. So this goes to show the impact and the mentality and the procedure being followed by the uh, patent office which is responsible for examining these applications. So many of you will also be uh, probably be going for patenting your softwares and whatnot, but you should be aware about all this. So the 2017 guidelines which are the latest guidelines so far, they do not require any sort of novel hardware, hence the 54% monthly increase. So while we could say that an individual is benefited vastly through the granting of a patent. That particular individual to whom the patent has been granted will definitely benefit out of it. But it's the community that suffers. Because think about it, for 20 years, 20 years is like light years in terms of software. In 20 years, you'll have, you'll finally get to produce another a uh, false alternative to a proprietary software and by that time the software technology that you're trying to deploy will already be rendered, uh, will be rendered obsolete. So this is, if it's visible, uh, another problem with the granting of software patents by the patent office is that many orders lack reasoned judgment and 
uh, there is no reasoning at all in their orders. This is a, on the left you can see how orders should look like. It's a, uh, the patent application number is mentioned. It's signed properly, it's dated, the reasons are given. On the right hand side you have just two, a two liner statement saying after considering the, uh, the arguments we grant the patent and that's it. So there is no reasoning behind it which raises a lot of questions behind the functioning of the patent office, how it functions. We have no, we have no uh, understanding of it. Like I mentioned, uh, without mentioning the grounds, the objections are cleared and the patent is granted. Even though algorithms themselves are completely prohibited, but they're still being granted by the patent office. Many abstracts mislead the patent office by saying that, oh, we have a hardware uh, limitation in our, uh, uh, like in our patent. And when you closely scrutinize the document and the specifications, you find out, okay, there is no, there is no such hardware involved. So the patent office is not even properly going through the specifications. Uh, Justice Krishna Iyer, in fact, back in 2008, uh, talked about the mono monopoly of multinationals when it comes to granting software patents and it is something that must be avoided. So these are some of the usual, usual suspects that I've uh, observed in my research so far and some, some of the glaring examples. An automated system and method of data scrubbing was actually patented and this was granted to TCS back in 2019. It says automated in the patent itself, the title of the patent. So you can imagine how bad it is. A method of OCR was granted to uh, the patent of, uh, the patent was granted to Google in, back in 2018. A method and apparatus for super resolution of images. This patent was granted to ATI Technologies back in 2020. And the justification that they're giving for this is that, oh, we, we have a technical effect because it's run on a computer, so we can get away with the law. It's completely wrong un uh, interpretation of the law and this should immediately be rectified. This is my favorite, like not favorite, but yeah. Method and system for web search by browsing the search result pages. So Google patents Googling. This is uh, regarding advertisement data. So selecting social endorsement information for an advertisement for display to a viewing user. It's too technical in terms of the language, but what it si simply try is trying to say is that you basically will get personalized ads in the form of an algorithm. So yeah. Method of streaming multi, uh, media cast in mobile device. This is even granted to Microsoft in 2017. So these are the, some of the case studies that I have uh, researched so far. What are some of the proposed solutions that we can look at? So one of them is to definitely engage with the uh, IP or the Indian Patent Office and tell them that there's a problem. And you cannot just go on and keep handing out patents to anyone you like. There needs to be a proper, just, fair and reasonable mechanism of doing it and not some arbitrary procedure that you're following. And definitely there needs to be a modification in the examination procedure. How patents are, uh, patent applications are uh, examined and that will translate into having a stricter regime in terms of not just guidelines, but having an implementation in the law itself. So that probably per se can be removed from the uh, statutory text. Uh, Viva la Revolution, with inputs from Samarth Mishra, Prachi Nandi and Vishal R. These are our research assistants at SFLC.in and uh, Mishi Chaudhary and Prashant Sagatan. Thank you so much. I thought I to see so many software patenting issues where there should be none. But uh, there's this argument that comes up. You know, we have this discussion, people, I've heard many people say 
America has an extremely litigious software landscape, and yet software innovation thrives there, and it has been one of the most innovative uh, geographies in the world when it comes to software. So, how does that work? I've heard that it, I've heard that as a pro software patent argument saying you can still have massive innovation despite patents. So, how, what do you think of that? That's a great question, actually. Um, so, the difference here is that. In the United States of America, you have different laws. And over there, you are allowed to patent your softwares. But in case of India, since we've seen that, we've seen uh, the history of uh, data colonialism and just a general sense of, you know, f foreigners coming into our land and then getting away with things. That's too general a statement, but that's what's happening in India as well. They are, as, as our uh, study also points out, 90% of these patents in, on an average are being handed to foreign companies. So it is a way of exploitation, I would say. At the same time, I, I, am, not, I am not in favor of the argument that s startups should be given software patents because it becomes a vicious cycle. Because at the same time, the startup will be uh, forced in a way to sell those ideas and those inventions to bigger multinationals. And that will actually end up being the same story all over again. So yeah, thanks. Any other questions? I, I have a little bit of a dumb question, but I saw some, like those case studies seem like they were uh, like there's so many open source projects out there that, that do exactly that and I'm sure profitable companies that do exactly that. So like how how they are like to exist and like what does a patent even mean uh, if like Googling is patent like they've done that go like which operates pretty successfully but how, how does that still work if uh, you know Google has a patent for it? That's right. Uh, th that's again a good question. So the point over here is that Google has its own algorithm, right? And that it has made proprietary by obtaining a patent. And then also the source code, I'm guessing, would be in the domain of copyright. But at the same time, what Google is doing is that you go ahead and you file a patent, OK? Now, you're not prohibited from, you're not completely prohibited from developing your own uh, algorithm, but even if it is the slightest similar to Google's, you will be forced to either off infringement or you'll have to pay a royalty, which is like uh, in terms of monetary consideration. So again, it's debatable whether patenting should exist in the first place or not. I'm not going into that debate. That's a completely separate debate. But you do have something like uh, open source patent patenting. So that is also a solution. Uh, since I have the mic, and my last transfer the other one. Thank you. That's super, super helpful and interesting. I have two linked questions. One in your research, did you encounter examples of enforcement of any of these patents? Any of these entities seeking to enforce them against entities in India? And this is related to that, since the Indian system is a bit unique, that it allows pre-grant and post-grant opposition. Did you see any data or evidence around either of that happening? With people trying to oppose these uh, patents being granted either in the pre-grant stage or the post-grant stage? Uh, thanks. thanks a lot for that question. So um, actually, I had mentioned this in my speaker notes. I forgot to add it. Uh, but yeah, uh, you absolutely right. Um, we, we don't have the empirical data for it. But a lot of these smaller companies, and especially a lot of entities like uh, government institutions, like let's say the IITs, uh, they try to get patents. And uh, in general, I'm saying that a lot of these patents are objected to by the uh, multinationals, foreign multinationals, in my personal experience. I don't have empirical data on it, but Yes, that definitely happens. And uh, it's the same, same story all over again that they try to, because like for any entity or that is smaller in nature, 
by the very definition it it will be harder for them to fight litigation right so they themselves feel threatened by the cost of litigation and the burden that litigation uh, in the, in the form of opposition proceedings or pre pre grant or post grant both so in that case what really happens is that they are likely to withdraw their patent or 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 they eventually lose the battle that those are the two outcomes thank you i think i can add to that uh, sfnc had uh, filed a post grant uh, opposition and that's been under consideration for the last 12 years yeah. i have a question which is uh, you know so what does it tangibly mean for the uh, force community in india you know has have patents been enforced against uh, force projects outside of india uh, any examples of that i can't really think of an example right now but um, the broader picture i would say is that by the time like i said by the time you want to have an a force alternative you can't expect either expect the party to pay royalty because that is against the uh the law, the i would say the principles of force and on the other hand if you want to have a like you, on the other hand you have patent trolls who try to make money out of it so you're surrounded from all sides so the only feasible solution for me when it comes to force is open source patent that is something that we should we definitely need to research more on i would say thank you Uh, so this is basically a follow on on the last answer. So you said that uh, the the solution is the open source patent, but then that does not leave the software free anymore, right? It's not it's not forced now. It's created with open source. No, uh, you're you're right. You're partly right, I would say, because at the same time you have to, uh, if the software is in combination with a hardware and produces a further technical effect. like i pointed out in my slides so in that case i would suggest that you still need to give credit to the inventor for the labor that they've put in right the, you you cannot be completely absolute in your terms of completely uh, patent open sourcing your uh, i mean open source is definitely a requirement but i in my personal opinion i would say that open source patents do work and they work under such a license like you have apache 2.0 and then there's this free academic license also so these licenses actually suggest that you have the power to modify reuse use and uh, you know do all these things without any uh, problem so i think you need to look at the problem from both sides and because uh, when you say patent you mean like license yeah No 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 it doesn't